Hi, so my name is Al Wilson. I'm the founder and CEO of Beyond Walls. We're headquartered here in Lynn. We're a nonprofit with the mission of activating space to strengthen communities. Um, behind me here is a piece by the artist Bordalo II. Bordalo comes from Portugal and speaks Portuguese. There's a large Brazilian community here in Lynn that speaks Portuguese. The narrative of Bordalo II's piece uh, and all of his pieces is that the, the plastic that we think is being recycled is largely not being recycled and it's going into landfills. Uh, and so prior to Bordalo II arriving here, um, we collected plastic uh, that would have gone in the dump. And when he arrived, we put it all out here in this alley and he looked at it and cut pieces with a circular saw and a sawzall and then put these pieces up here. Half of the pieces are in its sort of organic form, right? The color of the plastic. And then the other half is painted in the color of the animal. And in this case, it's a white mouse. So Beyond Walls at its inception was just a pure volunteer effort. Um, there was a desire shared for more art. There was a recent um, art designated area of the downtown from Massachusetts uh, Cultural Council. And then there was some underlit areas of the downtown that Post wanted to see uh, lighting go up. And so 28 person committee formed from that and ultimately became Beyond Walls. And our first focus was to install large scale pieces of art based on this shared community need. We're looking at a piece behind me here of a uh, wasp elder who came to Lynn in 2018 and put up this giant piece here um, in just six days using liquid paint. So it features on the left-hand frame um, is Jan Metzlinger. Jan was the uh, son of a slave who went to school in Philadelphia and then uh, moved up to Lynn and came up with the shoe lasting machine, which really kept Lynn on the map as far as the sort of shoe capital of, of the US, rapidly increasing the production of shoes. And then this party here on the right represents the female uh, workforce that was in these factories. So a big part of the labor was made up of women on the, on the factory floor. Uh, and they really were instrumental in, in demanding better working conditions. They actually led a big walk out here, um, demanding for a five day work week, eight hour work day. Um, the one thing that women weren't allowed to do when it came to the production of shoes was to work on the sole of the shoe. It was really considered only the work of a, of a male craftsman. And so here, uh, Wasp in researching that um, decided to, to feature this woman working on the sole of the shoe, something she would have been prevented from doing. Lynn has all of the challenges of any former industrial city in the Commonwealth. It just also happens to have this little ditty, a little song about Lynn, um, that really the city has worked hard to try and offset that. Um, and so there was a thought that the city could be known as a city full of art. Uh, and so creating that that new dialogue about the city and what this city is. So this large scale piece behind me here is um, by the artist Smug One. And he does these pieces that are sort of photorealistic. Ferns Francois does an awful lot for the city and does, is a great videographer, but he's also a model. We had Smug meet him, photograph him, and then take the photo up on his lift, and then he freehand painted this over the course of seven days on a 135 foot boom lift. So pretty high up. This is just larger than eight stories. The great piece about this is it's called The Resident because Ferns, the subject of the photo, uh, actually lives in the buildings. And you can imagine it's pretty fun when he has friends come visit or just orders pizza and then comes down to the door to pay for the delivery. So fun piece our work with youth. Um, we focused on the middle school uh, as well as high school ESL learners uh, to provide a resource um, that really focuses on the core elements of social studies, history, geography, culture. And we've provided that for Lynn Public Schools free of charge. Uh, and the kids love it. They're super engaged. We're hearing from teachers, administrators, parents, 
It's all the kids are talking about at the dinner table. The idea here was to put up enough pieces where if you didn't find a piece appealing to you, you could see a piece in the background and, and, and then walk on and take in that piece. And what we've seen is groups from very different backgrounds seem to come together. I mean, whether they're culturally different, socioeconomically different, and then they start chatting in front of a piece of art and they start a dialogue and there's a relationship that sort of forms on this sort of limited uh, level in front of a piece of art and then they walk on and they take in the next piece together. And then of course, there's an economic development piece for the city, right? You're, you're branding the city as full of art, but it's getting people here. Many of these artists, they're on, on an international level of saying like, wow, where's the hottest street art in the world? And Lynn is on that map. People really do come from far away to take in our art. And while they're here, they grab a cup of coffee at Land of a Thousand Hills or here at Lazy Llama. They then continue to walk around. They grab a bite to eat, they grab lunch, they take in a show at the Lynn Auditorium, they grab dinner. And so there really is an economic output to this. The creative economy is something that's very real. And Lynn is now seeing that. If people do want to follow along and they're on Facebook or Instagram, they can follow us at, at Beyond Walls Lynn. Um, and we'd love for folks to share their stories about what they see in the art, how the art makes them feel, and take photos and, and tag us on Facebook and Instagram. To support Greater Lynn Senior Services and see more videos like these, please consider making a donation at the link below and subscribe to our channel.